Thanks for joining us today. Um, you know, we want to talk about the League of Legends World Champions 2020. Riot Games, Apostle Productions, and Lux Machina joined forces to create a, a groundbreaking XR solution for the League of Legends Championship. For those of you who don't know, League of Legends is, I think, it, it, you know, it's an esports game. It's, I think it's one of the most popular esports game in the world. It's the most popular esports game in China. Um, and it is uh, one of the most viewed television events um, worldwide, um, viewed by hundreds of millions of people over the course of 30 or 40 days. Specifically today, we're talking about um, the lead-in to World Champions, so the play-ins, the semifinals, quarters. Normally, it's a touring show, um, but this year it was, because of the pandemic, bound to an arena in Shanghai. So we're going to talk about some of the XR technology and what we did on, uh, on the day to make it a really cool event. So um, with me today, I've got uh, Wyatt Bartel from Lux Machina, and I've got Roy Chung from Possible. Um, so why don't you guys introduce yourself? Why don't we start with you, Wyatt. Why don't you tell me a little bit about um, who you are, but also what you did on the show and what your role was. I'm Wyatt Bartel. I'm the Executive Vice President of Production here at Lux Machina. And uh, for this show, I was the Virtual Production Producer and Supervisor. So I was in charge of all the XR technology that uh, our company has brought to bear on this show. I'm Roy Chung. I'm the Executive Producer at Possible. We are a creative partner with Wright in developing the overall creative look and feel of the global esports events, including Worlds 2020. And I'm Phil Galler, uh, one of the uh, co-founders of Lux Machina and um, uh, great partners with uh, Roy and Wyatt and, um, and the Riot Gang. And um, yeah, really, really excited to be moderating this roundtable today. Hey, look, this was a really big, challenging XR event. Um, Roy, can you tell me a little bit about why XR was chosen um, for this show? I know there were a lot of, obviously, COVID-related challenges and, and touring challenges. I'd love to hear a little bit more about why, uh, why XR was chosen. XR was chosen for this event specifically because of the challenges that we faced in 2020 both with COVID-19 uh, re restricting us to an audience-less event for the most part, and also because traditionally the World's Tournament is a touring event that goes throughout several cities th in the host region. And this year we wanted to find a way that despite the sort of restrictions caused by COVID, we could still create uh, an atmosphere of a changing tournament environment and to sort of maintain the momentum and excitement that builds up towards uh, the World's final event. Great. So you actually used different environments for every sort of phase of the game, quarters, semifinals, and that allowed you to sort of represent as if it was almost like a touring show going to different locations. Is that sort of the, the, the idea? The World's 2020 tournament was based on a new game mechanic that was introduced with the different elemental dragons in the game. So for the different environments in the tournament, we actually based each one on one of the elements. And this both created a touch point for players to recognize that, hey, here are some elements of the game brought to life. And also it allowed the tournament, even though it wasn't touring, to have the sensation of being uh, in a changing environment and it wasn't just a static one familiar like look the whole time. You know, one of the other complexities with the show is that it's a live broadcast. I think there's been a lot of XR productions that are done that are, you know, that, that certain that we've worked on I think collectively that are, you know, things that maybe only have really fast turnaround, you know, two or three days they go to post then they're out. Um, this is very different. This was a live broadcast and it was on air as I understand it, I think for 240 hours, right? So I'd, I'd love to hear from both of you, but I'll start with you, Wyatt. Um, what are some of the things that you need to manage technically first and foremost, you know, um, when you're dealing with the live broadcast? I know you had multiple cameras you were tracking and actually had multiple cameras projected on the wall at one point. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, one of the biggest things to, to bring to bear on a show like this is, is stability, making sure that you bring the right products, the right team, everything is tested. And there were some technical hurdles you had, to, you had to sort of overcome, right? One was, as I understand, having multiple cameras you know, pr present on screen at once, so multiple frustums. And then you, you had to be able to cut between those cameras. Um, and I, I know you also had some interactive lighting elements that you drove. Can you tell me a little bit about those two, those two things specifically? We had an array of Aerie Sky panels overhead that we were sending DMX data to, uh, driven from a scene capture in Unreal. It's really trying to drive the concept of the XR environment being a, you know, an inclusive uh, blending of the digital and the real worlds. And then um, they were also in a remote uh, station, the director and the technical director. Um, so they were a couple miles away. So they sent us signals over fiber underneath the ground. Uh, they came to us and we did our best to time them down to the frame to make sure that when they wanted to call another camera that wasn't on screen at the exact same time as some of the other ones, that turned on at the appropriate time. Everything was, uh, you know, frame synced and that for the most part it was uh, a seamless execution for them. The idea with the design of the environments was for them to be fully interactive and to really feature elements that both players and the audience at home would recognize from the game uh, and really just 
it brings the whole environment to life and I think gives the viewers at home something special to really see their, their favorite pro players actually share the stage with some of the characters from the game. Look, we talked a lot about XR and, 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 and um, I'd love to hear from each of you sort of what you think XR is. I know for me, XR is this idea that um, we are using cameras and tricking the camera into thinking that it's somewhere that it's not. Roy, why don't you go uh, first? I think XR for us really represents uh, truly an immersive experience. So it's, it's about following the camera, sure, but I think it's more about giving, whether it's the audience at home, uh, actors on stage, pro players on stage, the feeling that they are actually truly living inside the environment that they are playing against. Uh, for me, XR is, is the use of LED walls to create windows into the world. And then on top of that, where the LEDs are not, uh, putting AR graphics on top to continue to extend that virtual window to infinity, more or less. So I uh, want to thank you both for coming today and having this conversation with us. Um, you know, before we wrap up, is there anything each of you, uh, you know, want to say about your experience on the show? Uh, I mean, this was obviously a lot of work, and we couldn't have done it without a tremendous amount of trust, both between uh, our, our two companies and with Riot themselves. And it really, we, we pushed the technology a lot farther than, than we'd seen up to that point. And despite the challenges of having to figure that out in real time, I think that I wouldn't have traded the experience just because of how brilliant all, all the, the crew were and how collaborative the entire experience was. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that sentiment, absolutely. These, these projects require a, an immense amount of trust, and that was definitely something that, that grew for us between Possible and Riot as well as the payoff for this show, you know, not only in the first stage of the, of the play-ins where you saw the first world and everything turned on and worked, you know, that was, that was a really great feeling. And then the technology and the art just kept getting better and better and better as we moved through the, the quarters and the semifinals. And, um, you know, that, that run of, of success is, is something that is very rare, I, I think, in this industry to, to push boundaries and make it look good all at the same time and, and be successful for, for so many hours on air, so. The reality is still to this day, this is one of the most technologically advanced, creatively in-depth um, and harmonious projects between three entities, you know, doing a, a live broadcast. And I think I truly believe it will stand the test of time as a, you know, a, a pinnacle of the XR and real-time um, workflow solutions for in-camera projects. So I'm uh, really excited to see where um, everyone goes next. And um, I want to thank, obviously, Roy, thank you for coming, and, and Wyatt, thanks for coming, and of course, uh, the Riot team for allowing us to do this. So um, thanks.